All right, so let's say that we have 0.2 moles of sodium hydroxide in uh, two liters. find the pH. Let's try this. And we want to try to do this systematically using the same kinds of techniques we used for the last two problems. So you started by writing the chemical equation. That's a good start. Is any always a strong phase? That's a good question. Uh, you tell me. What do you think? Is that strong or weak? I think it's weak. Um, you agree with that? No, I think it's always strong. Strong. So. Yeah. So you should memorize the common strong acids and strong bases. Or actually, I think on your test, they're usually given on the front cover of the okay. test, right? There's usually a list of the strong acids and strong bases. OK. Um, the common strong bases are sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide. Oh, yeah. OK. Um, so, but anyway, this is a strong base, OK? Now, this is a little bit different from what we saw before. If you think about it, if you try to work out the equation, there isn't really any role for water to play here. Uh, so this is one case where we leave water out of the reaction, because this is just going to donate hydroxides. And the hydroxides don't have to be donated to, to anybody. We know that the hydroxides can just float around in the water. Of course, there is water in the solution, but it's not participating in this reaction. So there's no point writing the water. If you wrote down the water, you would just have plus water on the left and plus water on the right. It wouldn't be playing any role. All right, I think this is the only, so this is the one reaction, well, so this is hard for people to remember, but a strong base by itself, we don't include water in the reaction, okay? Is it um, twelve percent water or something? 12.7, was that your answer? Or? Yeah. Because it is 10 to the point of one. Okay, you're close. Um, so the sodium hydroxide, so one thing you did well here is you didn't put in, or, or did you? You didn't put in 0.2. Because what we really care about is the molarity, right? So you started by calculating the molarity. Well, the molarity is 0.2 moles over 2 liters. So that would be 0.1 moles per liter. This table can be used for either moles or molarity, but in this case, it's more convenient to do molarity because the pH is about concentration, not about moles. So I plug in um, a zero here. Um, now, is this going to completion? Yes, because it's a strong base. So what's going to be the change in hydroxide? Plus 0.1. Now again, because this is strong, the sodium must be unreactive so that the reverse reaction doesn't happen. So we don't need to bother figuring out anything about the sodium. It can't be uh, affecting the reaction. We talked earlier about how the conjugate of a strong acid has to be unreactive. Well, by the same token, the conjugate of a strong base has to be unreactive. I think there just was a technical error when you were working through the math. So let's see. The logical thing to do here is to start by finding the pOH, which is the negative log of the hydroxide concentration. So that would be the negative log of 0.1. Notice that in this case, this number is not the hydronium concentration, it's the hydroxide concentration. That's one of the advantages of writing out the table, so we can see what this stands for. Uh, what's the negative? Uh, so what is the, the uh, it's one. 
Yeah, so this is the negative log of 10 to the negative 1. So the log is negative 1. And try that from 14. Yeah, we know that the pH plus the pOH equals 14. So in this case, we would have the pH equals 14 minus 1, which is 13. Okay, so it looks like you were basically doing it right, except there must have been some kind of calculation error at the end. Okay. Well, what do you do? Um, oh, wait. When you're given the pH, you do, and you want to find the molarity, we do 10 to the power of negative pH, right? Right. That's so, why I got confused. Yeah, that's what I got. <clears throat> so, uh, if we solve this equation, we would have. So here you want to get the hydronium by itself. Well, the inverse function to taking the log base 10 is raising things to the 10th power. So if we took this equation and solved for hydronium, we would get this equation. So yeah, if you're given the pH and you want to find the hydronium concentration, you take the pH, you take the negative of the pH, and make that the power of 10. Okay, but in this case, we were going in the opposite direction from the concentration to the pOH. Okay, well, I think we should be in the habit of doing is checking whether our answers make sense. Does an answer of 13 make sense here? Yeah. If we'd gotten an answer of, uh, if we'd gotten an answer of 1, we would know we made a mistake because we wanted a, acidic, uh, a basic solution, not acidic. So you should always check on the test that your answers are going to be making sense. Okay, um, so which case did we do on the handout? Uh, strong base. Strong base. So you want to make a note, what's the page in your notes where this is covered. One thing that's different here is that you don't include water in the reaction. Otherwise, this is pretty similar to the strong acid. <clears throat> also, um, you might at first have not realized that we don't use the point 2. We have to change this into a concentration. So that's something you have to watch out for on acid-base problems. You should never write down a number by itself. You should always write down the units, moles or molarity. That's a mistake I make sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> 